So, now we are at our last session. So, it works as well with the VR technology. So, we will invite on the stage Anton Titov, Chief Product Officer of VRM Medical, that will tell about virtual reality and its way to healthcare. Sound check? Perfect. Hello again, my name is Anton. I'm Chief Product Officer of uh, VR Medical, and I know this is the last presentation and you are probably uh, very tired after those four days, so I'm not going to load you with any difficult and heavy information charts and statistics. I'm going to tell you one story about one technology that was presented in this world for quite a long time, exactly six years, almost. Uh, and everything was started in 1962, when this technology called Sensorama was presented. And it was the first ever system that we can call virtual reality. Uh, the purpose of this system was to provide you with many different senses and try to put you deep in some new experiences, alternative to the real world. And I was asking myself how the hell someone was able and wanted to design something like this. But it's always coming in this innovation path that someone decided that there is a market for something. And then come in another people and saying there is no market. And uh, after last five decades, virtual reality was going through many different waves of innovation. There was new people who was coming, bringing new technology uh, prototypes, saying now it will work, now it will help, but it wasn't. And I think only last two years, there was some changes on the market that really allow us to say that virtual reality during next decade will be widespread technology. I will try to explain you why. If you look back 40 years ago to experience virtual reality, you was need to have a headset that was weighted at around five kilos or something. And you was literally need to have about 100 cables on your hands to be able to rear to uh, to control virtual reality. Five years ago, which is not far away, you will still need to have a huge headset, huge controllers, tens of cables, and what is most important, very expensive and very powerful computers to run those virtual reality applications. And what we have right now is mobile headsets like this. You don't need even controllers. Everything is included. There is a graphics, there is a sound, there is internet. Everything is connected. and all those changes I actually was brought on the market during last years. Uh, performance of video processors increased up to 1,000%. Right now, we don't need those computers. Uh, visual recognition technology. Right now, we're not only able to recognize some kind of gestures, but we're able to recognize your hands. And that's why you don't need controllers anymore. Uh, all of these displays becomes mobile, energy sufficient and energy independent. Also, what is very important is that the whole technology become very affordable from thousands of dollars or euros to $500. And almost any family in Europe or UN or the United States can purchase it. And the last point is actually some kind of underground aid, but it is also very important because developers who are able to create virtual reality applications a mix of people. You should be a little bit of artist, a bit of programmer, and a bit of animator, and you should do a lot of things at the same time. This community of developers is still small, and those people will be really rare as gold for the next decade. Um, if you look on the market, you probably also heard that Facebook changed its name to the Meta. That's because all giants like Apple, Microsoft, Google and Facebook are going to create alternative metaverses for us. And virtual reality worlds will grow over the next decade. And in only healthcare, expected growth is more than 30 times, uh, up to the evaluation of $50 billion. And in healthcare, there is already more use cases where virtual reality proved as an efficient technology that can help people not only be healed, but also be trained more effectively. We're talking about medical training for medical personnel, pain management, physical therapy, rehabilitation, uh, virtual reality for children, dentistry, and other areas. areas. Why we're here, uh, our company was doing virtual reality applications for the last five years. Right now, we're transmitting our experience to the transport, retail, safety, and also medical sphere. 
And our division of virtual uh, reality medical is uh, concentrated on two main goals. First, we're creating virtual reality applications for patients, for medical personnel, and for the device producers or device distributors. And the second goal that we're having market available technologies and trying to adapt it to be user friendly for hospital and medicians. Because right now, if you will buy it to a home, you will need to set up a safety area for you. You will be able to control applications only inside of the headquest uh, of the headset, but we're able to do all of it remotely or just get rid of it. As a medicine uh, division, we're doing three streams. First, uh, rehabilitation for the patients. There is more reasons why it is useful and why it is good. Uh, first of all, all of these physical rehabilitations are made as a game, so basically they are much more motivating for the patients. But what is really charming about virtual reality is that it is able to decrease level of pain during exercises up to 70%, which is proved by many studies. It is also improving ranges of patients because they do not feel pain so much and they also are not available to uh, be fully aware of how they do the movement because they don't see their hands and in virtual reality you can really fake it for them and trick their brain and a uh, special case for people after head strokes <coughs> first year you have high level of neuroplasticity and virtual reality is able also to support this level by tricking your mind in some ways second niche is virtual reality trainings we are calling it Easily, it's learning by doing. This is really like in the game. You should do and complete all the tasks during the learning. So this is allow you to learn faster, and it is also increase up to four times long mem uh, long term memorizing of all facts and processes that you get through. And the third division uh, of our application is related to device providers. We are helping to create applications for sales and support, which increase sales processes, decreased travel and shipping costs of really heavy devices, and it also allows device producers to provide remote product trainings. Uh, right now, I want to show you one use case of our application. This is musculoskeletal rehabilitation, which was done in the Faculty University Hospital of Pilsen in Czech Republic. As you can see, there is two elderly patients. The only thing that they need is just to have a headset on their heads. Uh, then medicine launching through our platform remotely exercises for each of them. And then they go in through rehabilitation, which consists of three main steps. First one is uh, calibration, where patient showing what are the allowed and possible ranges for him to move with his hand, for example. And uh, then in this area, we are placing exercises. It, should be, it can be different plain, playful experiences either from fishing, connecting the dots, uh, or anything you would come up with. And the third point is, which is very, very important, that through those cameras, which is placed here, we're not only tracking hands, but we also like to collect data from patient rehabilitation. It means that we're able to track how patient is improving day after day with his rehabilitation, with ran his ranges, flexion, abduction, and etc. And none of, this, none of this wouldn't be impossible with market-available hardware if you wouldn't customize it properly. That's why we have a special platform through which we are managing the users, which means organizations, patients, medicians. Then we're managing hardware because we know where the headsets are placed, if they're charged, if they're available or not. Through this application, we're able to manage virtual reality applications on the headsets, basically updating them, managing them, and launching them. And also, we are collecting data under the same platform, trying to place and visualize objectivized data, data for the patient or therapist. Right now, we have our product certified as a medical device one, uh, class one, and we're offering it in Czech Republic, having uh, five pilots running right now. But what was very interesting is that on the Medica, we have been uh, meeting a couple of uh, medical device producers who was uh, doing different uh, physiotherapy devices, and they was asking us if we can become for them something like virtual immersive virtual experience layer. Basically, they would still gonna build the machines for physiotherapy, but they would want to have this additional layer of virtual reality. And actually, we really like this idea, and we're really open to talk about it. So if you are producing either some kind of rehabilitation technologies or any other medical equipment and devices, it would be really interesting to talk about this possibility of cooperation. 
and uh, to think about it, try to think about it. If your procedure or procedure related to your device, made in your device or with your device, can be more motivating for the patient, can be less painful, less stressful, or overall more pleasant, this is what virtual reality can really serve for, for a good. That's it. Thank you for your attention, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us today. Are there any questions? Yeah, I think everything is clear. So thank <laughs> you very much. Finish. Good luck for, for, for thank the you. future and, and for this exciting metaverse world that we will thank see. Thank you a lot. Have a nice day. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>